Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Thursday, August 18th, 2016. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, over there in Asia, eh, DK down, Shanghai down, Hang Sang up. Over there in Europe, happy days, everything's up. Here in the States, up. Oil, whoop, up again. And gold, gold is up. So what happened? Well, let's take a look first at Europe because it was happy news over there. I'm reading this just to show you how thin all of this... Bullshit detected. Take precautions. And I do mean take precautions. I'm sticking to our top trend forecast for 2016. The panic of 2016. When this thing goes down, it's going to go down fast. This whole thing is a fraud. Whether it's oil, whether it's the markets, it's all being pumped up with two things. Lies and cheap money. So, here's why the European markets are up. A solid recovery in commodities helped lift European stocks by the close of Thursday as investors poured over the minutes from the U.S. Federal Reserve's July meeting on top of digesting another batch of earnings. Now, we'll start with the earnings first. Key earnings were one of the main drivers for the markets on Thursday. Remember, this is over in Europe. One of the biggest movers was Vesta's Wind, which shot up to the top of the stock 600 after its second quarter earnings beat market expectations, and the renewable energy firm upgraded its 2016 guidance. I want to stop at renewable energies because it ties back into oil. Hey, oil prices are going up. Remember what I kept saying. They're talking the markets up. All this talk about OPEC's going to have a meeting on the sidelines in mid-September, and that's what's driving the prices up because they're going to come to a deal. Renewable energies. They're cutting in to the old energy market. It's all hype to drive the market prices up on the energy field so they can make more dough. And they're doing it every day. And hey, as long as they keep doing it and the traders are in the group pushing it up, they'll keep doing it. On to other news. This is why the markets went up. Wind. (sighs) That's right. A lot of hot air blew it up. Here's the other reason why in Europe. Another strong performer was travel group Thomas Cook, which jumped 7.5% after it signed a supply deal with Webjet. Yeah, that's going to create a lot of jobs along the way. That's a good reason for the markets to go up. None of these are. Swiss food giant Nestle said its first half Sales grew 3.5%, missing analysts' expectations. Commodities were on a winning streak on Thursday as basic resources outperformed its fellow sectors. Basic resources, commodities. In order for commodity prices to go up, Imports and exports of countries have to increase. We gave you the information on China's lousy import-export numbers in yesterday's trend alert. We've showed you how first-half GDP in the United States grew the grand total of 1%. So when El Presidente of Los Estados Unidos... Yet a dictator-in-chief who signed more executive orders than anybody else before him, 
that does what he wants to do and then gets up to address the nation and say that anyone that is saying the U.S. economy isn't strong is peddling fiction. Yeah, the fiction teller himself, Barack Obama. Hey, Barack, I know you only listen to Beyonce and that other bad rap. See if you can hear this one. You're the fiction teller because, hey, look at the GDP number that your government put out for the first half of this year. It grew 1%. You know what that is? That sucks. Yeah, that ain't fiction. That is fact. Hey, now let's take a look over there in Europe. First half GDP grew the grand total of 0.4%. Commodity prices going up as demand is down. Why? It's rigged. When this thing crashes, man, it's going to be fast, instant, full, hard, and global. That's my forecast. Here, yeah. show you how great things are around the world. Japan's July exports dropped 14% on year. Well, the reason they went down is because the yen is strong and they can't export a lot of product. Yeah, I've heard that one before. So if the yen is so strong, all you prostitutes that shoot your mouth off all the time, the same old group that they keep bringing back on Bloomberg, on CNBC, because they only want to hear the same old... Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. That's right. The same ones that keep peddling the same horseshit will say, well, Salenti, what's wrong with you? The yen is strong, so their exports are weak. So I would say to them, okay, man, gotcha. So if the yen is strong, and so strong, they should be buying a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. Imports tumbled 24.7%. I'm going back to that why stocks went up over there in Europe on strong commodity prices. We saw imports slowing dramatically in China. Exports slowing. And commodity prices are going up? Based on what? Oh, I know. Wind sales and Thomas Cook made a deal with uh, Webjet. Yeah. Okay. Good. And I got a bridge in Brooklyn, man. I could sell you really cheap. So, I want to stay on the energy. Because here's what they're saying. This is the way the prostitutes work things. Many OPEC members have been hurt badly by a collapse in oil prices over the last two years. While some Gulf oil exporters have very low output costs, other producers, such as Iran and Venezuela. Iran and Venezuela, the two countries the Americans have learned to hate because of the prostitute media that puts out for their Washington John. That's the only two countries that they mention. Who need oil prices above $100 to balance their budgets. Hey, wankers, how about Saudi Arabia? Yeah, they need $100 a barrel too. Yeah, and they just bought $20 billion worth of bombs from El Presidente of Los Estados Unidos so they could bomb the innocent people of Yemen and slaughter them. Hey, but they're doing it with our intelligence and our reconnaissance. Yeah, only Venezuela, huh? Only Iran. Oslo rustles, rustle, ruffles feathers as it taps wealth fund for the first time in two decades because of falling oil prices and lower return on investments. Look at all the Fitch downgrading from the oil-rich countries in the Gulf, but they don't mention one word. You know why? Because they're prostitutes. They're low-life media whores. 
So, other great news why the markets went up today. Mortgage applications fell 4%. That, even as rates sit near record lows. What's going on? Where is it going? How is it going to affect us? We'll tell you how. Yesterday you got your trend alert. And you know what that trend alert said? Market boom, market bust, what's the future? Well, that was yesterday. Today, trends monthly. That's right, your trends monthly. Where are we going? What will it look like? How will it affect you? What are the dangers? What are the opportunities? They're all spelled out here. Remember, you just got your trends journal. Not more than three weeks ago. You got a trend alerts, two of them since then. And now the trends monthly. Central banks and lies and lies and more lies. I break this down to you going in a question and answer narrative that puts the whole picture in place, where it's going, and what to expect to happen. Other stories. On the entrepreneurs, how it's going to affect the business you're in, the business you may want to move into, the profession you're in, the profession you may want to move out to. All this information. Plus, here's a big one. You know, I'm the guy that coined the term clean foods. That's right. Back in 1993, New York Times even did a story on it. Well, get ready for this one. You want to see a big investment opportunity? Try clean phones. That's right. And there's much more in this. Besides the clean phone bonanza, chatbots, the next big thing. You want to take control of your life? Start taking control of public funds. That's right. It's a trend. It's happening. It's part of our Trends Journal feature story. People power. It's happening. Artful aging. More about that as well. You know, I keep saying two of the biggest trends. Clean food, clean water. Much more in your Trends Monthly. Now, let's move on to some geopolitical news. I want to show you how the propaganda works so properly. Last week and over the weekend, Putin dismisses a longtime ally as a chief of staff in favor of a servant. That's the way they did The new guy that he's picking is a servant. How come when America has a new chief of staff, they don't make it like this, huh? Because they're prostitutes. They get paid to put out their media whores. Washington tells them what to write. The corporate media tells them what to say. Questions remain as Putin purges old guard. Got rid of some old cat, been with him a long time, brought a new one in. Hey, CEOs come and go. Chief of staffs come and go, but no, no, no. Not when you're Russian, then there's a bigger story behind it because here's how the narrative keeps playing out. Remember, that happens on the, on the weekend, and then we begin the week with Russian warplanes use Iranian airbase to launch strikes on Islamists in Syria. Front page at the Wall Street Journal, big Russian plane. Russia hits Syria from Iran. And then the response. Russia rejects U.S. concerns over Iran base. The Russian military said Wednesday it launched a second round of airstrikes in Syria from a base in western Iran as top officials reject a U.S. contention that the assault could violate a United Nations resolution. Here's the United Nations resolution. It forbids the supply, sale, and transfer of combat aircraft to Iran without 
the council's prior approval. So, on Wednesday, Russian Foreign Minister Lvov escalated the war on words, denying that operating from Iran violated the resolution. You see how they say it? He escalated. And here's what he said. There is no reason to suspect Russia of breaking the UN resolution. Russia hasn't supplied or transferred Russian military planes to Iran. Another Russian spokesman said, it says that war planes are sold, transferred, or used inside Iran only with permission of the UN Security Council. We suggest the representatives of the State Department get out their pencils and trace the lines on the map to discover the fact that Syria is a separate sovereign state. Yeah. But those are only the facts. It's the lies that count because that's all that adds up in the people's minds. So, the war of words are heating up and the wars are heating up. You're seeing more and more tensions on the Ukraine border. More and more tensions in the South China Sea. More and more tensions building up in the Gulf states, throughout the Middle East. No end in sight in the war in Afghanistan. 48 bombs already dropped over Libya by Obama without any approval from Congress. The Syrian war keeps getting hotter. And then there's the economy. A lot's going on. We're in the heat of the summer. A lot of people are tuned out. They're on vacation, in a vacation state of mind. But not you. You're reading History Before It Happens with the Trends Journal, the Trend Alerts, and this month's Trends Monthly. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News.